Hey, Crosspoint community, it's Pastor Sean, and we are in a series today called Multiply. Jesus sent his disciples, his followers, into all the world to multiply, to make disciples of all nations. That's you, that's me, that's, that's all of us. That's our calling, that's our commissioning. And so we're going to be looking at the text this morning, what it means to be called and what it means to be to multiply and to make disciples. I'm excited to jump in the Word. And uh, before we do, I want to invite you, let's take a look at these announcements and see what's happening at Crosspoint. Good morning, Cross Point. I am so excited to be here with you today. If it's your first time here, welcome. We would love for you to fill out a Digital Connect card, which you can actually access by scanning the QR code on the screen. You can scan it on the seat right in front of you in that little circle, or you can visit us in person at the Welcome and Information Center. We promise we will not be stalking you. With that being said, here are a few announcements for you guys today. Hi, Crosspoint family. We have some exciting news for you. Our fall small groups are just around the corner and we can't wait to jump into these meaningful experiences with you. So if you're looking for some support or care or you just wanna have a lot of fun, um, we can't wait to join you soon. We have just the group for you. So mark your calendars because fall small group signups begin August 20th and it's your chance to join a community where we can share, care, grow, and have fun together. Signing up is easy. You can do it right from the palm of your hand on our app or our website, or after service, you can visit the Welcome Information Center and a friendly face will help you get started. All right, well, we have the blood drive coming up August 24th from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you're someone who's interested and willing to bless someone else by donating blood, this is our chance to do so. We hope to see you here. Hi, my name is Cordelia Kelsey. I'm part of the staff at Cross Point. I have a question. Have you ever felt like no matter what you do, things go wrong? It kind of feels like you have a target on your back? Or are you feeling stuck in your walk with the Lord? If so, come to Cleansing Seminar. We will talk about complete surrender to the Lord, learning the effects of words spoken over us, and how to walk in the Spirit. Come and join us on August 25th at 7 p.m. in The Well. I believe it would change your life. Heads up all the beach lovers, and even if you don't love the beach, we will be having a Cross Point Beach Bash. This will be taking place on August 26th from 10 to 3. It's a Saturday. You're more than welcome to bring all of your family, all your friends, all your neighbors. Bring as much food as you want. This day is simply going to be full of so much fun, so much bonding, memories to be made. You do not want to miss it. We'll see you there. Hey, Alive Parents, this announcement is for you. If you're the parent of a student grades 7 through 12, we're having a fall parent kickoff where we're gonna have all the leaders there, we're gonna have a little bit of food, we're gonna talk about the vision for the year, and you can even ask some questions and get to know other parents. So, August 27th, Sunday, in the bridge at 1245 after service. We will see you there. Hey, what's up, young adults? Pastor Charlie and Karina here. That's right. So all young adults in the room, this announcement is for you. Listen up. We've got our next Big Thursday coming up, which is gonna be August 31st at seven o'clock. And we're gonna be celebrating our farewell summer party. That's right, you don't wanna miss it. We're gonna have watermelon eating contests. We're gonna have dad jokes. We're gonna have stand-up comedy. You don't wanna miss that ping pong competition. We're gonna have bonfires with s'mores. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You don't wanna miss it. You really, really, really don't. We'll see you there. Here at Crosspoint, we believe that God has blessed us to be a blessing. And one of the ways that we're able to be a blessing is through our finances. And here at Crosspoint, we have various ways of giving. We can do it through online, by mail, and in person. Thank you so much for your generosity and your faithfulness. And those are the announcements for today. If you want any more information of what's going on here at Crosspoint, you can visit us online on our app or across the hall at the Welcome and Information Center. Welcome home and enjoy the rest of service. All right, good morning. I have to say it's a bit weird hearing about a beach day in the midst of all this rain, right? I mean, I'm looking forward to that this Saturday and I know by then it's gonna be warm, but uh, it, is, it, is, it is rainy and I have to say, um, you know, congratulations. I tip my hat to all of you for making it here in the midst of the rain. Um, you know, especially for our greeters or who are, who are outside standing in the rain, they're still standing out there now. No, I'm kidding. They're inside, but, um, 
you know, it's so fa- it's so interesting to me because I grew up in Oregon, and in Oregon, uh, it was the complete opposite. So it rains all the time there. And so in the summer, when the weather was actually nice and the sun was out, that's when everybody missed church. But here in California, it's the complete opposite. When it rains, we're like, no, 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 I'm not going out in that. Like, got to hunker down. So well done. Great job. You guys are here. I want to do something uh, a little bit different since it's a little bit more of an intimate uh, group today. I want to invite us. Let's stand together. We're going to do this together. Let's stand together. Go ahead, stand together. And uh, I want to invite us, let's come together in like these first four or five rows and just kind of move in, move forward. I feel like, I feel like this, is, this is a, a close enough group. We could do this. And if, uh, if you have to sit next to somebody, uh, I promise they won't, they won't bite or they don't, you know, they're, they're friendly, they're kind. Go ahead, greet them, introduce yourself to them, get to know somebody you haven't met before. I just feel like, I feel like I need a campfire going on or like a fireplace on this back screen, blankets, just make it kind of like cozy, you know, wouldn't that be fun? Make it just kind of like a living room setting. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's great to, great to be here this morning. I do want to mention too, by the way, I'm not sure if this was up, but uh, for any men in the room, I do want to mention that... Uh, our men's retreat, which is taking place beginning October 20th through the 22nd, we actually have an early bird rate going on right now. So if you haven't signed up for the retreat, do so before. I think the early bird rate is good through the first weekend in September. So something to just be thinking about. You could register in advance and, and receive a, uh, some a savings there. But, uh, you know, as, uh, as we begin this morning, here's the thing about rain and, and storms, and this isn't even in the message, but... You know, you hear the rain come down, you hear some, some drips and, and stuff. And, I, you know, something we've realized is, you know, when it rains, it re- you realize, you hear the drips? See, some of that is the drain pipe. Some of that is not the drain pipe. <laughs> so, so when it rains, it has the ability to reveal, you know, areas where there's holes or gaps or leaks. And it's a good reminder to examine our life and figure out where do we need to button up? Where do we need to tighten up and, and patch up? And, you know, I was, as I was worshiping this morning, I just felt like the Lord kind of said, Sean, you know, that's, that's true also for our, for our lives. You know, um, when you walk through storms, and maybe you're walking through one right now, you know, storms, as difficult as they are, they do have the ability to reveal where the leaks are, where the gaps are, where the holes are in our life. And, you know, one of the silver linings in that is we can, use that and look at that and say, all right, that's, those are areas where I need to tighten up. I need to, I need to, to strengthen or, or give attention to. So uh, that's, that's a freebie this morning. Wasn't in the notes. Um, thank you all for coming. I'll see you guys next Sunday. And, but um, no, I don't know. I just felt like maybe that was for somebody this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, though, go ahead and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And um, we, uh, we, we begin a new series this morning. The series title is, is Multiply. And we'll be spending the next uh, two weeks in this series. See, as a church, we, we exist with, with a mission. And in our, our mission here at Crosspoint is to help draw those uh, far from God near to God. And we do that one life at a time. We do that by helping others know God, grow together, and, and make a difference. And, and so we have a call on our life. We have a mission. Matthew, actually, Matthew 28, verse 19 says, um, and we'll get to Ephesians in just a moment, but Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded, to you, commanded you. And surely, it says, I am with you to the end of the age. Now, as we begin this new series, um, the series title is, it, we're calling it Multiply. And the reason why we're calling it Multiply is twofold. One is um, we're gearing up for our next, for our fall season of small groups, which begins this September. And one of the content materials that we're going to be going through is a, a resource called Multiply by um, uh, pastor and author Francis Chan. And it, and really, he's talking a lot about this. So this is kind of a preview, a sneak peek for, or just kind of like a teaser for what's to come in our small group season that the Lord has given us all a call, a call on all of our lives to go and make disciples. And so we're going to get, dive deep and, and take a greater, greater look at what that is. Um, but also, uh, the second reason is, is because as a church, we have a call. 
We have a mission to go and make disciples, to draw those far from God, draw, draw them near to the Lord and help them to discover his love in their life. And so we're going to spend the next uh, three weeks. And by the way, this is a three-part message. So we're going to get to the end. I'm just giving you a heads up. We're going to get to the end of this morning's message. And, and you're going to say, okay, so what's next? You're, you'll have to come back next week to figure out what's next. It's a three-parter. So it's one message split into three parts. And it did that on purpose because I figured you guys, you know, I want to get you guys home at a decent hour. Sound good? All right. So here we go. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at. Ephesians chapter two, we're going to jump in right now. It says this, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift, a free gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. So none of us can boast about it. And so this right away, we're told that grace, uh, salvation is, is through grace, by grace and by grace alone. We can't earn it. No good works we do are, uh, make, our, make us deserving of the gift of salvation. It's a free gift. Um, and, and, and many of us, I think, are, uh, are familiar with or have read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. But often we leave out verse 10. And we, verse 10 is important because verse 10 begins with the word for, which is a, it's a conjunction. It means, so because of this, and then it goes on. So let's take a look real quick at verse 10. Um, it says, for, or because of this, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he's planned for us long ago. So verse 8 and 9 shows us that we are saved by grace. It's a free gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's a free gift. We're undeserving that God has given it to us, blessed us with it. It's free and, salva and, and it's a gift of salvation. But verse 10 reveals to us that because of this grace, we are also empowered to now go and do something. So what is it this morning, uh, what is it that, that we're called to go and do? See, that's what we're going to unpack a little bit and, and take a look at in verse 10, is that God has prepared in advance something for us to go and do, to partner with him on and to engage with uh, in our lives. So to establish this, what I want to do is I'm going to uh, take us on a little bit of a journey. We're going to kind of unpack a lot of different uh, scriptures this morning. And you'll say probably more than normal. I'll have them all up on the screen. So just come, uh, come along with me on this journey. And you'll see as, as we near the end, it, it all ties together. But the first truth I want to just talk through together is this. You were not saved by grace just to be somebody. You were also empowered by the same grace to do something. To do something. Not only were you called, but just as strong as that call towards salvation was the call that you have to do something. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 38, he says, For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me and not to do my own will. And then in John chapter 20, verse 21, he continues by saying, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. So the question comes up then, well, where is he sending us? Or to whom is he sending us? And why is he sending us? And so what I want to do this morning is, is look at these because deep down within us, we know that we were created for something more than just this life. Deep down within all of us, I believe if we dig deep enough, deep down inside, you know you were created with purpose. You know that there's purpose within you, that you're not here by accident. And that you exist for more than just the mundane, more than just the day-to-day, -day, that there's 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 purpose within you and passion. And I believe that, there, that it's there on purpose and that God is the one who's placed it there. But, but what do we do with this and how do we access this? So I want to look very quickly at three important words. The first one comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 6. The first two, actually. It says this. It says, in his grace, say that, say that with me, grace. In his grace, God has given us different gifts. Say gifts for doing certain things well. So if God's given you the ability to prophesy, speak out as much as, uh, with, with as much faith as God has given you. So I want, to talk about, I want to talk about these two words, grace and gifts, grace and gifts. The first word being grace. The grace of God meaning salvation, of course, but it's not only salvation. Salvation is a free gift, but also from this word grace, there is also an empowerment. Say empowerment an empowerment. See, this is good. See, we know that the grace of God brings the free gift of salvation. But we also just read from scripture that in addition to the free gift of salvation, there's an empowerment to now go and do something. 
Take a look at what Paul says about God's grace in 2 Corinthians 12. He says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And then in 2 Peter 1, may God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. See, see, we see here God's grace is defined as a divine empowerment over our life. A divine empowerment. As a matter of fact, this Greek word grace in, in Strong's Dictionary, it's, it's the Greek word uh, charis, um, meaning gift or loving kindness or favor. So applied to our own life, the gift of grace is a, a, a loving kindness, a favor. It's a condition of being governed by this divine power or empowerment in our life to do something great. If you recall, that's why in Acts chapter 11, uh, it says that he saw the, all that the grace of God, all that the grace of God had done. He saw it. It wasn't something that he heard about the grace. He saw evidenced the grace of God. So when you walk in God's grace, you're not only walking in your weakness, but here's the beautiful thing. When you walk in God's grace, you're not only walking in your weakness, you're walking in his empowerment, right? So God, grace is an empowerment that enables us to go beyond our natural abilities, so that's, that's, gr that's grace. Now I want to shift gears, take a look at the second word, which is gifts. Say that with me, gifts. The word gifts comes also from the Greek word. Uh, actually, the, the root of the word gifts is charis, which is, which is grace. That's the root word, but you add two letters for, for gifts, the letters M and A. So now you got the word, Greek word charisma, right? And that's where we get our, our word charisma from. It builds on the root or the gift of grace, but it empowers, this word gifts, empowers individuals to fulfill that which they, God had created them to do. Now, just to kind of paint uh, an illustration of this, some of you might know this, some of you might not, but, but um, when I was younger, any, any invitation or thought of, of public speaking absolutely terrified me. When I, when I was younger, it, like in elementary and high school, I remember whenever I had to get up and do a school presentation, remember like those, you know, like present on like, you know, a state or, or like a, a country and you had to get up and do a public presentation. Whenever, whenever it was my turn, I would turn beet red and I would just start dripping sweat. Like I would get so nervous anytime I had to do any type of public speaking or presentation. Like it just was not something I looked forward to and I dreaded it, absolutely dreaded it. As a matter of fact, when I was, when I was really young, before I even realized this, this, this fear I had, um, I remember being in elementary school and I knew in my next class I had to do a presentation. So I hid under the desk and, I, and when that class dismissed and went to the next class, I stayed under the desk so I didn't have to go and do my next, the presentation in my next class. Like I was, I mean, I was just, I, ter I was terrified. I didn't look forward to it. Um, by the, time, by the time I got to Bible college, of all places, I remember taking a class called Preaching Practicum. We all had to take this. And it's where you gave a 15-minute message in front of your class, and they gave you feedback on it. And I remember every time it was my turn to preach, the night before, I'd stay up like the whole night just so anxious thinking about or trying to put together some sort of a message or outline uh, to share the next day. And I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd get so worked up that sometimes <laughs> I didn't even get anything together. And I'd just get to class the next day and I'd say, you know what? I had something thought out, but the Holy Spirit just gave me a fresh word. So here we go. Right? Like it was, it was you know, the, the, the word said like, do this, don't do that. And I thought, what else do I have to say? It's already right here in the word. Just read your Bible. We don't need preachers. Like, there you go. Like, I, it was just, I was terrified it, terrified about this, but, but, by, but in my obedience... From the call of God comes the empowerment of God through his grace. With the call of God will come the empowerment, the grace of God to empower us to fulfill that which he's called us to even in our weakness. Come on, doesn't scripture say when we are weak, he is what? Uh huh. When we are weak, he is strong. His grace is sufficient for us. You know, um, God has given each and every one of us a gift. And, and some of us, we, we, choose, we, we can do one of two things. We can, we can look at somebody else's gift and say, oh, I wish I had that gift. Or, you know, I, I wish I had that gift. But he's given each of us a gift. And in our, even in those areas where we are not strong, he empowers us. Are you with me this morning? See, grace and gift, grace and gift. Grace is a free gift, but grace is also an empowerment to do his will. So don't be afraid to walk in that because in, even in your weakness, 
He will give you the power along the way. See, there's things that we're gifted in, things we're not gifted in. And, and it's hard sometimes to not look at somebody else's gift and think, man, I wish I had that gift. I mean, I, for, I mean, for instance, I know one thing's for sure. One thing's for sure, I do not have the gift of singing. I remember when I was in, I was in third grade, there was, this, there was this girl I had a crush on, and she was in choir class. So I signed up for choir class. But after a few weeks of choir class and singing in a group, the instructor said, all right, now we're going to um, each come up one by one in front of the class. You're going to sing, and we're going to figure out which tone you are so we can, you know, get all this figured out. So we're going to do that uh, next week in class. Well, I, I decided right then and there, I'm, I'm dropping that class. Like, I'm not getting up in front of anybody and singing by myself. Like, that is not my gift. I mean, when Pastor Charlie sings, it's like people are ushered into God's presence. When I sing, people question God's creative abilities. Like, are you with me? Like, yeah. Gift and great, like there's things that we are gifted in, others think, you know, it's actually kind of funny around, uh, around the church here, every month our staff sings happy birthday to whoever's birthdays fall in that month. And we have kind of a fun tradition around here where we all sing happy birthday to these individuals together, but we do it in our most off pitch tone um, of singing that we can. But when you put it all together, it's actually quite beautiful. But, but we're all off pitch and mostly it's a fun tradition because it helps me, helps me not feel singled out in my, in my singing abilities. But just a little inside scoop there. Um, don't throw away the gift that God has given you. Um, so my question is this, is what is God empowering you to do? What is he, what is he empowering you to do? If you've opened your heart to a relationship with Jesus and received the free gift of salvation, he, he, he has a call on your life. And, and, and he has a, a beautiful call on your life. And with the call of God comes the empowerment. What has he empowered you to do? Who is he calling you to reach? What is your gift? And we have to be careful too, especially in the church, not to look at somebody else's gift and, and, and covet their gift. You know, sometimes we look at, at the bicep, you know, we're the body of Christ and we look at the bicep and we're like, I want, I want to be the bicep of the body of Christ. <laughs> But maybe Jesus is calling you to be the small toe, the baby toe. Like, I don't want to be the baby toe. I want to, I want to be the big toe or the bicep. Like, but, but God has given us each a gift. The toe is also the one that holds the body up and keeps it stable. I mean, come on. We each have a purpose. We each have a strength and a gift that God has given us. Don't sit on it and be idle. See, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 says, This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards. Say that with me. Stewards stewards of the mysteries of God. I want to take a look. This is the third word we're going to look at this morning, the word stewards. What is it to be a steward of, of something? I mean, a steward is someone who manages someone else's property or affairs. A steward, by the way, is not someone that is micromanaged. God has given each and every one of us gifts, talents, and abilities, but he's not going to micromanage you. God's not a micromanager. He's not going to micromanage your life or your gift or your talent or your ability. He's entrusted that unto you. As a matter of fact, a great biblical example of this is found in the Old Testament with Joseph and Potiphar. Remember Joseph, he's a slave in Potiphar's house and Potiphar promotes Joseph because he's such a good steward. Even though he's a slave, he's such a good steward. He promotes Joseph and places him over the affairs of his whole house, all of his finances, all of his resources over everything. And it says that Potiphar doesn't even know what was going on financially except for what he ate at his table because that's right there in front of him. He didn't, he didn't micromanage Joseph. He, he had no idea what Joseph was doing, but he saw evidence, the multiplication of what God was doing. So he's not micromanaging you, but the bigger question is, is this, if we're servants and stewards, if we're servants and stewards, what are we servants and stewards of? See, we are servants and stewards of the charisma, the gifts, the empowerment that God has given us. See, my ability to speak is not my ability, it's the Lord's. And I have to answer the question, am I going to use that gift, the empowerment, for my purpose, to build my kingdom, my agenda, or to build God's and for his purposes? I remember when I was in young adult ministry, and I, and I um, leading up to a message one night, I just remember having a discontentment in my spirit. I just felt like the Lord was saying, Sean, I want you to speak on, on this topic over here. And I reasoned with the Lord, and I said, but Lord, I've already prepared this topic over here. I, I'm ready. Let's do this. And he was like, and I just remember, he, he, he so clearly said to me, so, so who's running the show? Is, is it you or me? See, God has given each and every one of us a gift. And we all have to answer the question, are we, are we going to use that gift and talent to build our kingdom, and our, our life, 
or his? Which one is it? See, as a Christ follower, we have to make that determination. We're stewards of gifts. We're all stewards of gifts. But sometimes we're not always good stewards. There's good stewards and bad stewards. You know, we're not always the best at stewarding certain things. Actually, an illustration of this, I think I've shared this before. When I was in high school, my dad had, I think, like a 1986 or 88 Pontiac uh, uh, Trans Am, Firebird, I don't know, V8, you know, old muscle car, right? This thing was in like pristine condition. And he entrusted me as a steward, as a manager of that pow powerful automobile to, to steward it well. And I just remember one day I was out with my friends. My friends were like, dude, you should just light those tires up, you know, get them spinning. And, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. And so I just remember sitting there and I just revved the engine, dropped the clutch and the tires, man, they're just spinning, smoke's coming up. I'm looking out the window, everyone's smiling at me. I'm smiling back. Like, you know, it was like a, a, a moment of euphoria where I thought, this is so cool. And then the engine starts re like redlining and I thought, well, I don't know what to do now. So I just shifted, kept it going. You know, second gear, tires are still spinning, the car's not moving. I'm just like, oh, this is great. But then all of a sudden the tires gain traction and just launch the car right into the sidewalk. Just totally mess up the front end of the car. I was not a good steward of the empower, the power that I was entrusted to me. See, given, we're all given power. We're all given a power in our life. But when we don't properly steward that empowerment that's entrusted to us, we can either miss out, harm ourselves or others. And in that situation, I was not a good steward. Are you with me this morning? See, we all have gifts. And I love this. 1 Peter 4.10 says, each of you, say that with me, each of you. Each of you, not, not Pastor Sean, not, not Pastor Mary, not, not the people in the sound booth, not the ones working in the kids' ministry, all of you, each of you, to all of us, it says, all of you what? All of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. This is where it all begins to come together. Stay with me now. To serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This is beautiful. This is where it all ties together. We got each of the, the words that we're looking at this morning tied in right here. See, we've been graciously given different, di different gifts. Not just me, not just Pastor Mike, or, or, or you, or you, or all of us were, are, are given, entrusted with, freely given gifts by our Father, by God, and entrusted to what? To serve others as what? As faithful stewards of God's grace. See, it doesn't say to each pastor, to each minister, to each worship leader, to each volunteer, only when you're in the church, it, it, only if you're on a staff. God's ability supersedes our natural ability, and it's been entrusted to all of you, to all of us. Minister in this gift. This means use the gift that God has entrusted to you. He's not going to micromanage you. He's, he, he's not. He's going to entrust you to decide up to you if you're going to build your kingdom or God's kingdom. If you're going to use the gifts that he's entrusted to you to draw those far from God near to God, or if you're going to build your own kingdom. Actually, there's a third category. And the third category is, is you sit on the gift and you do nothing with it, whether maybe it's because of fear, intimidation, and trepidation, who knows? But God has given each of us a gift, an ability. Some of us some of you, maybe it's a doctor, an educator, a superintendent, salesman, entrepreneur, maybe in the marketplace. We are all called, and with the call of God comes the gift of God to fulfill that which he's called us to. Not just pastors, not just ministers, but all of us. And the interesting thing is, is if we're not careful, is we can, we can fall into the category where we say, you know what? I'm only going to use my gift to serve others when I'm serving in a volunteer role or a, paid, or a staff role at church. I'm only going to use my, my gift when, on, on Sunday or on Wednesday or when I'm at church. But that's not what this says. See, God has given each of you a gift. For some, maybe you serve in the helps industry. For others, maybe you're, maybe you're, in, you're, you're in sales. For other, all different industries, God has given you gifts. And we're called to steward those gifts, to draw those far from, near, far from God, near to God, not just on Sunday, but in the totality of our life and in, in of who we are. See, here's, a, here's an example of this. And if we're not careful, um, if, if I said to you, I'm going to give you 10 or $15 million today. Don't raise your hand. But how many of you would just say, man, I'm retiring. Like, I'm going to just sit good. I'm, I'm going to go vacation. I'm going to retire. I'm just going to cash. I'm going to retire. 
no more work, right? Well, Pastor Sean, isn't that, I mean, isn't that what we work for is, is to retire, to save up, to enjoy? Potentially, hang on, stay with me now. Now, suppose somebody came up to me after service, said, Pastor Sean, here's 10 or $15 million. Should I respond by saying, thank you? As of today, I'm submitting my resignation because I'm going into retirement. No more preaching, no more pastoring. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Suppose Billy Graham, one of the greatest known preachers and pastors when he was alive, suppose at age 45, he had enough money in his bank to take care of his family, to be taken care of, or maybe not Billy Graham, maybe Greg Laurie or, or Lisa Turker just said, you know what, I'm financially set, so I'm gonna stop preaching. No more books, no more traveling, no more writing, no more podcasts. I, me and my family, we're set financially, so we're good, we're done. You'd say, no way, Pastor Sean. God has called you. There's a gift he's given you. And, and this is what I would say to any one of them. I'd be like, no, keep writing the books. Keep preaching. God's given you, given you an, an anointing. He's called you. But wait a second. According to Scripture, according to what we just read, isn't that true for all of us? See, he's given us all gifts and talents and abilities. And, and, and to all of us, we have to ask the question, are we building our kingdom or are we building God's kingdom? And, and man, just again, building off that example, if God's gifted you as an entrepreneur and in the marketplace and you do have a 10 or $15 million uh, a business, A, we could use a new roof. I'll just toss it. Um, <laughs> but, but, but stay with me now. Let's say, let's say you're young and you're, you don't really need to retire yet. You're 45, who knows? What if you work 10 more years and turn that 10 or $15 million business into a $35 million business? And then you sold it. And you used the proceeds from that to benefit God's kingdom. Are you, are you tracking with me this morning? See, if God has gifted you, whatever area he's gifted you in, and it's different gifts for all of us, are we using that gift for our own glory and purposes, our own kingdom, or for God's? See, and it's not wrong to have the, 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 these, there's a beautiful array of gifts and it's not wrong to make even lots of money. That's, the question is, is where's our heart and how are we stewarding? We are, are, how, how are we stewarding the gifts that God has given us? Are you with me this morning? See, go back to what Paul says in Corinthians. He says, this is how one should regard us as what? As servants of Christ and stewards, servants and stewards, servants and stewards of the mysteries of God. So now stay with me. Look at this next verse. It says, it's required that those who've been given a trust must prove faithful. Must prove faithful. What does that mean, faithful? I want to take a look at this word faithful for just a moment. How would, you, how would you define the word faithful? Go ahead and shout it out. How would you define the word faithful? Shout it out. Faithful. Loyal. Trust. Huh? Obedience? Okay, loyalty, trust, obedience. What else? One more. Consistency. I mean, I, when, you look, when you think about faithfulness, and these are all great answers, and they all consist of or made up of this word faithfulness. I mean, steadfastness, dependability, reliability, tr uh, being true or trustworthy, devoted, truthful, these are great. But if you look at scripture, there's actually one word for faithfulness that's, that's actually not included in the, in the words that I just read, read through to you. And, as, and, and what I want to do is I want to look at this parable that's, that's told in Scripture to understand what, how, how, how the word faithfulness is, is really looked at or defined. See, how many, I don't know how many remember the parable of the talents. In, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus tells the parable, parable of the talents. Talent, by the way, uh, a talent is it's a measure of weight, usually gold, silver, or some precious metal. And so Jesus is telling this, this, um, this parable, and he says this. He says, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. And then he went on his journey. Now we're going to use, again, in this, for the sake of the parable, we're using money, management, and stewardship of finances for the illustration. But this extends far beyond just the stewardship of finances in our life. This has to do with also with the gifts that God has entrusted to us. Now, for context on this parable, the, the talents that, that are being entrusted to them, one talent, one bag, one talent would weigh approximately 75 pounds. Now, if, if it were 75 pounds of, let's say, silver, that would be approximately in today's, in today's um, 
um, uh, rate of exchange. 25, 75 pounds of silver would be approximately $27,500. Now, if it were gold, a more precious metal, it would be about $2.2 .2 million worth. And, and, I, and I share that and I pause on that for just a moment because of this. God has gifted each one of you with talents and abilities. And not only is that talent weighty, but it is incredibly valuable in the eyes of the Lord. You with me? He, he's given each of us talents and gifts and abilities entrusted to our stewardship. And those are not to be taken lightly. They're incredibly weighty. There's a responsibility, a weight that comes with it. And it's valuable and it's precious in his sight and not only to him and to you, but to the others that that gift is, is to be used to reach. Are you with me? And so he goes on to say, he says that, I want to look at this again. It says, a man going on a journey called his servants and, and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another he gave two bags of gold, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. And then he went on his journey. Now, it can be hard, sometimes it's a little tricky for me to keep up, uh, keep track of all the different bags of, of, of talents and the different people. So let's personalize this for just a moment. Let's say Pastor Michelle gets five bags. Let's say Pastor Tyler gets two bags, and I'm sorry, Pastor Charlie, he gets one bag. I don't know. Short, drew the short straw on this one. So the question is, the question becomes this then. What is, what is Pastor Michelle, what does she do with her five talents? According to the scripture, she gets to work. She gets busy right away. She goes and takes those five talents. She goes into action. She multiplies them. She, she takes those five. She turns them into, into, into ten talents. Pastor Tyler, he takes his two talents. He turns them into four. And then scripture goes on to say, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. To the one, this is Michelle, who had received five bags of gold, uh, she brought another five bags. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. Look at me, though. I, I've gained five more. And his master replied, well, well done, good and what? Faithful servant. You have been, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things come and share the master's happiness see this is beautiful here because jesus directly connects faithfulness with multiplication he directly connects faithfulness with multiplication see it doesn't say scripture didn't say here it, it, jesus didn't say michelle you were reliable you were you were true you were trustworthy you were devoted you were trust trust tr truthful it says she was faithful because she multiplied. So one of the primary definitions then we see in scripture here for faithfulness is multiplication. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you now in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. This is awesome. Now Tyler, I mean, Tyler turned his two talents into four, so he's looking for an attaboy, right, with the big guy. So he comes and his master says, well, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will now put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. This is interesting. Did you guys catch it? You catch it? Exactly. The master's words in response were the exact same to both Michelle and to Tyler. Tyler doesn't get a smaller reward than Michelle. And see, what happens in our life is sometimes we look at the fruit or the results of somebody else's gift or talent, and because of comparison, we say, oh, their gift is better than mine. I want the bicep, not the big toe. Jesus says to both, well done, good and faithful servant. See, I believe that that's for somebody this morning. Somebody who, who, who's here that God has given you a gift and a talent and an ability. And man, I, and I get it. We live in a world where comparison is, is just everywhere. But you need to know that gift that God has given you and you specifically is precious, it's valuable, it's weighty, it's intentional. And the question becomes then for each of us, are we building our kingdom or God's? Are we being a faithful steward of that which he's entrusted? Because he's not going to micromanage us. He's asking us, are we going to use it to build his kingdom or ours? Well, Pastor Sean, are you saying then that, that Billy Graham is not going to be at the the, the front gates, you know, first in line at the doors of heaven? I don't know. Maybe he will. But I also know a lot of, of great mothers and fathers who have been incredibly faithful 
with the little ones that they've entrusted that I believe will be standing right there at the front gates as well. Amen? So Pastor Charlie, well, he had one talent, and he came to the master, and he said this. He says, Master, I, I knew you were a hard man, harvesting where you've not sown, gathering where you've not scattered seeds. So I was afraid, and I went out, and I, I hid your gold in the ground. So here's what belongs to you. Now stay with me here. Does this sound, sound familiar? Sound like any other story in Scripture, right? Anyone else who was kind of intimidated? Does anyone think of Timothy? Remember Timothy? He was afraid. He was intimidated. As a matter of fact, he had to be encouraged. And, and in 1 Timothy, he was encouraged. He says, he was told, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech and in conduct and in love and in faith and in purity. Well, yeah, I understand. That was a different situation. We're not, again, we're not talking about salvation or earning salvation. That's, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. Well, but some of us, what I do want to point out is some of us, we, we don't step out or step into the gifts that God has given us. And, and, and we're, not, we're not stewarding those gifts that he's entrusted to us. And some, for some of us, it might be because of fear or intimidation or age or background or upbringing or somebody told you you weren't capable or not able and we believe this lie or false truth or we tried at one point and it didn't work. But you got to get back in the game. See, fear is a terrible taskmaster, master, and if you want to overcome fear, the key is laying your life down for Jesus. Jesus said, what? No greater love th than this than laying down our life for another, right? Perfect love casts out all fear. And so if you, if, you, if you know you have a gift in your life and you're just been timid or fearful of stepping into that, listen, lay down your life for Jesus. And in that laying down, the fear will be cast out. See, Jesus responds to the third servant, you wicked, lazy servant. And so what is Jesus teaching us about our labor through this parable or through this story? He says, and listen, by the way, again, we're not talking about salvation. I'm talking about labor and stewardship of the gifts he's imparted to us. He's teaching us that those who multiply are faithful and will reap a reward. Those who multiply are faithful and will reap a reward. Take a look at what happens. The master says to Charlie, well then give your one talent to Michelle. So now Michelle no longer has 10 talents, she has 11. And the master says, whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they will have will be taken from them. Don't you love that? An abundance? I love that word abundance. And, and they will, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Do you believe that God has created us for an abundant life. He's given gifts and talents within each one of us, treasures, precious, precious gifts that he's entrusted to us. And see, some of us, I, I think there might be some this morning, you, you've allowed that gift or talent to grow stagnant or cold. And there are seasons of life that you will walk through, sometimes where you're intentionally focused on it and other times where you might not. And I know that there have been times in my own life where with the gifts and talents God has given me, I can, I can grow idle in them. Or, or I think, well, you know what, I'm, I'm at an okay point in this area of my life, but God has not called us to be at an okay point. Come on, he's called us to live the abundant life. And one of the primary definitions we see in scripture here for faithfulness is multiplication. And if God has gifted you as an entrepreneur, if God has gifted you as a leader, if God has gifted you as a teacher or a communicator or a worshiper or a salesman or in the helps or service industry, continue to refine the gift that God has implanted into you. Sharpen that gift. Refine that gift. Because he has created you for so much and for the abundant life, for abundant things. Don't sit on that gift anymore. Get back up. Get back in the game. Get back in the motion. So I ask you these two questions, and here I was want to, here's how I want to close. Number one is this. Who has God sent you to? As a church, as a body of believers, we are called to reach those who are far from God, to draw them near to him one life at a time. Who has he called you to? Who has he placed you in the midst of? Who has he called you to reach? And secondly, how are you stewarding the gifts that God has given you? How are you stewarding the gifts? Some of you, man, I mean, maybe your parents told you you weren't good enough. Your teachers told, told you you couldn't do it. Someone rejected you, your idea. Someone critiqued your attempt. You tried, you failed, but I'm here to encourage you, get back in the game. 
Get back up. If you fail, fail forward. Get back in the game. Henry Ford went bankrupt before ever starting the Ford Motor Company. Albert Einstein, pioneer of the theory of relativity, could not speak fluently until the age of nine and got expelled from school. WD-40, which stands for water, water dis displacement, WD-40. It took him 40 attempts to figure out the proper formula. WD-40, it took him 40 tries. Michael Jordan, he once said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've, almost, I've lost all, uh, almost 300 games. 26 times I've trusted to take, I was trusted to take the game-winning shot, and I failed. Or I missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Come on, fail, failure is not, does not mean conclusion or totality or, or, or it's over. Fail forward. Get back up. Get back in the game. In our weakness, he is made strong. It's not by our own abilities, and maybe that's why we failed, is because we are trusting in our own strength or ability. But God has gifted you, and he has called you to reach those who are far from God. He has gifted and created you uniquely to, to expand his kingdom here on earth, that we would be a church and a people unlike unlike the rest of the world, that we would be a church and a people who draw those far from God near one life at a time, helping them to know God, to grow together, and to make a lasting difference. Amen? So what are you called to do? And what is your gift? Well, Pastor Sean, I'm not sure. What are, the, what, what are my gifts? Come back, come back next week. That's what we're diving into next week. Again, this is a three-parter. If you're leaving this morning thinking, well, what now? Come back next week. Again, we're going through this. It's, it, it, it'll, we're building on this next week. Is it to lead, though? Is it to teach? Is it to encourage? Is it entrepreneurship, motherhood, fatherhood? Whatever that gift is, and whatever the Lord has called you to, step boldly into it. Trust him for his empowerment and serve him faithfully. And you will experience the abundant life. We can do it to build our kingdom, or we can do it to build God's kingdom. But God needs us to multiply. He needs us to multiply so we can go out and make disciples of all nations, so that we can see a fully devoted follower in every house, in every home in this valley, to reach those far from God and draw them near. And some of you, you've been dependable, you've been, you've been reliable, you've been trustworthy, but now God's calling you to multiply. So when our world says, store up for yourself, God says, pour out yourself for others. When the world says, build up your own kingdom, God says, build his kingdom. Where the world is calling you to fame and, and notoriety, Jesus is saying, make his name known. And where the world is calling you to make a name for yourself, Jesus says, will you help his name to be known? I want to invite us all to stand this morning, and I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us this morning as we stand. And I want to invite us to just go ahead and close our eyes at this time. I believe that there are some who are here this morning who know that you were created for purpose and with purpose. You know deep down inside God has called you to something great. You know deep down inside that he's gifted you with certain gifts and talents and abilities. And you've either been sitting on those gifts and talents for fear of what that life might look like apart from your own control and direction of life. Or you've been using those gifts and talents to build your kingdom and not his. But today, today we make the choice to say, Jesus, I want to build your kingdom. I want to get back up off of my gifts and I want to step boldly with the empowerment of your Holy Spirit into the life you've called me to to tap into those strengths, to tap into those gifts, to tap into those abilities, whether it's at my work, whether it's in my community, whether it's in my home and with my kids and my family. I need to step in and be the man or woman that you have called me and created me to be. So Holy Spirit, right now, I pray for a boldness to well up within our hearts this morning and in our spirits. I pray that we would fan into the flame, into flame the gifts that you have given us and entrusted unto us. Father, I pray that as we take those steps of faith, even in our weakness, may your strength be found. 
Lord, give us courage. Help us to step out. And Lord, I pray over the next two weeks as we go through this series together, Lord, would you bring clarity and revelation to each of us or to our gifts and those abilities and in the area that we should be stepping into in this season ahead. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Let's take a moment. Let's take this moment and just respond in worship to the Lord. I search the world But it couldn't fill me my empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, how many know there is nothing better than him? We say, there is nothing better than you there's nothing better than you there's nothing nothing is better than you we know that he's trusting us with everything let's give it back to him you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can you to grave. You turn graves into goddess. You turn bones into armies. You turn seeds into highways. You're the only one who can. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Yes, you are our treasure. Nothing is better than you. Yes, you are our treasure. We'll say it one more time. Lord, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, Jesus. There is nothing, nothing is better than you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Heavenly Father, there is nothing better than being in your presence and walking in all that you've called us to step into. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd empower us this morning, your church, to step into all the gifts, the call that you have on each of our lives, and that you'd give us power along the way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Church, I want to invite you to keep your eyes closed, your heads bowed for just a moment. Maybe you're here this morning. You know, the first step in stepping into the empowerment of God is opening your heart to a relationship with Him, recognizing that He is Lord and Savior of our life, that Jesus was sent by God to go to the cross to bear the penalty for our sins so that we wouldn't have to, so that our relationship with Jesus, with God, could be reconciled because God is totally holy, perfect, and pure. Yet we, we, we are sinful. But God wanted to reconcile that. So he, bore the, he, he took the 
the penalty, the price for our sin so that our relationship could be restored with him. But in that free gift of salvation also comes the empowerment to live the abundant life. I want to give an opportunity in just a moment for anyone who wants to open their heart to a relationship with Jesus and join those in our last service. And I'm going to invite you in just a moment, if that's you, to lift your hand. And that's, listen, no one's looking around. It's not for me. It's not for anyone here. But it's just a declaration before the Lord that, that you're making that decision today. So with every eye closed, with every head bowed, if you're in this room this morning, if you want to join those in the last service who said yes to a relationship with Jesus, would you go ahead? I want to invite you right now to just be so bold as to lift your hand before the Lord, making that declaration for yourself today. Amen. I see your hand. Anyone else? I don't want to miss you. Raise that, raise that hand nice and tall if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. So Heavenly Father, I pray for the one. And Lord, we rejoice for the three now today that have said yes to a relationship with you. Holy Spirit, come now and dwell in their heart and their life and fill them with not only your spirit, but the empowerment now to step into your will and call on their life. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and precious name. Amen. 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 Let's thank the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, I want to invite our prayer team up as the prayer team comes forward. If you're here, if you open your heart to a relationship with Jesus, as everyone's exiting in just a moment, I want to invite you to make your way down. And uh, we have a gift for you. We'd also love to pray with you. And if you have any other prayer requests this morning, we'd love to pray with you. Uh, just feel free to come on down. And uh, I'm looking forward, as crazy as this sounds, with all the rain, I'm looking forward to being at Ventura Beach this Saturday for our Beach Bash. If you're here this morning also um, and would like more information on our small groups, uh, that are coming up or more information on taking your next step with Jesus. Listen, I believe that no matter where we're at in our relationship with the Lord or our journey with him, there's a step that we could be taken near to him. And to learn more about that next step or to find information about our small groups, I want to invite you to head over to the Welcome and Information Center after service. And uh, our team there would be happy to connect with you. Bless you all today. Hey, listen, drive safe, stay dry, be on the lookout. Bless you all. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next weekend. What a great word. I hope that at some point throughout today's message, you felt a tug on your heart, some personal point of connection, or moved in some way. If you do feel like taking the next step in your relationship with the Lord, I want to invite you to head over to our Next Steps page. There you'll find a list of steps that you can take, and we want to partner with you in whatever that decision is today. If you are a regular part of uh, this community, the Cross Point community, and call this place home, and want to worship the Lord with your tithes and offering, I want to invite you after this video to click on the Give tab, and you'll be directed to a safe and secure place where you can give and worship the Lord with your tithes and offering. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for investing in the kingdom so that we can make a lasting and eternal impact. Thank you for trusting us and partnering with us on mission as we reach those who are far from God and draw them near to the Lord. We hope to see you next week.